ASMR reality. First, let me say thank you. If you are watching this, you are a small minority of my channel, so I appreciate you being here. It tells me something about you, so I appreciate that. Likely, you are among the most successful of ASMR reality subscribers. Let's get started. Shay actually laughed at Liam's warning. Worse than meetings. Yeah, I think so. Liam laughed back. It takes more time and energy. Ouch, Shay responded. Let me have it. It's about managing people, beginning with your team, making sure they work together and aren't getting bogged down by politics and confusion. Shay was relieved and even a little excited. Oh, you're talking about team building. We have an annual event here where we go off and do adventure activities and bond as a group. He seemed proud that he was on top of this one. No, Liam shook his head. I'm talking about day-to-day -day development of your team, getting them to be honest with each other and argue well, making sure they can tell each other on, call each other on their bullshit when they're not focused on what they should be doing. Shay didn't hesitate. Oh, I hate that stuff. I don't tolerate it. Liam wasn't sure what he meant, but wanted to be positive. Good for you. So what do you do? I tell people that I won't tolerate people being petty and political and acting like children. Does that work? If I ask Jackie or Carl if people were open and honest with each other, or if there was a lot of politics on the team, what would they say? Well, Shay suddenly seemed a little bit discouraged. They'd probably say, we have a lot of work to do in that area. And what are you doing about it? Shay seemed stuck. What do you do about it? What do you do about it? Liam laughed. I have a lot of direct and uncomfortable conversations with people. Shay's shoulders, shoulders slumped. Oh, I hate that. After an awkward moment, the two CEOs started laughing out loud in an almost pathetic way. Well, Liam assured him the good news is that very few people in the world like to do it. Shay nodded his agreement. Liam continued, and that's why I said before that you are supposed to have the most painful job in the company. He paused and let it sink in. See, if the CEO isn't confronting people about their issues, as unpleasant as that might be, he can't expect anyone else to. It sucks, but it has to happen. Like with Jackie, Shay conceded. Yeah, like with Jackie, Liam confirmed. And anyone else who needs to be confronted. With a sudden sense of energy, Shay raised himself up in his chair and she cheerfully asked Liam, So are you going to tell me that you actually like doing this too? Well, Liam tried to choose his words carefully. I don't know that I'd say I like it. I mean, every time I have to do it, I'm tempted to avoid it. What kind of stuff are we talking about here? Shay wanted to know. Liam thought about it for a few moments. Suddenly, he laughed painfully, calling to mind a recent experience a few weeks ago. I had to ask my head of sales not to hum during meetings. Did you say hum? Liam nodded. Oh, come on. Shay protested. That's ridiculous. I thought you were talking about business stuff, missing deadlines, pissing off customers, humming. Liam shrugged and laughed. I know it sounds strange, but it was driving people crazy. It was really distracting. Shay just laughed, but now in a slightly judgmental way. Liam didn't back down. I also get on people when they check their phones during meetings. I've had to tell my head of sales to talk less and ask more questions. And more than a few times, I've had to confront team members members who I thought weren't spending enough time managing their own people. He paused, and yes, I have to be ready to call them on their numbers and their deadlines, but that's a lot easier than the behavioral stuff. I guess, she admitted, but it's not as important. Liam shot back, okay, what about Jackie? What about her? 
is that if she does her job well, I don't care if she has bad breath, farts during meetings, and sings show tunes in the lunchroom. Even Leon couldn't keep from laughing, but you're ignoring the impact she's having on others, and it's going to affect her ability to get them to cut their budgets and do their jobs. You have to see that, Shay. Maybe, but I am not going to go around treating my grown-up executives like a bunch of middle school kids. We can all be big enough to deal with people's quirks without making a big deal out of it. Liam just sat and listened. When Shay saw that wasn't that he wasn't arguing, he decided to seek common ground. Hey, isn't it possible that there is more than one way to skin a cat? Maybe we just have different ways. Liam nodded, but not enthusiastically. Shay doubled down. Listen, if I manage to put together a big sales deal with this strategic partner, or I find a way to acquire a company at a discount, or if I land a whale of a client through my sales and negotiation skills, then I think I'm more than making up for the difference between letting people like Jackie be a little rough around the edges. Well, Liam offered gently, perhaps I do have a different way to skin a cat. Liam decided to back off for the moment, and the two CEOs spent the next half hour talking about the challenges of their businesses, dealing with competition and government regulations and other industry-specific matters. It was the most pleasant part of their time together so far. Finally, the waitress came and laid the check on the table. Liam thanked her and reached for it. No way, buddy. She objected. You come up here and give me all this free advice, and the least I can do is pay. He paused, looking at the check. $23.15 for lunch. He left $30 on the table, and looking at his watch, announced with more cheer than Liam, was, thought was warranted. Let's continue this conversation back in my office. Liam had no idea about what would be waiting for him there. On the way back to the office, Shay made a call to his assistant, Rita, whom he said only five words, I'll be there in den. Liam wondered why their arrival time mattered, but dismissed it without any thought. As they pulled up to the office and climbed out of the car, Shay made a comment that raised Liam's suspicions. You know, I really respect you, Liam, and appreciate you coming up here. I hope you know that. A little confused, Liam paused before shutting his door. Uh, okay, thanks. When they entered the office, Rita was waiting for them. Joe and Carrie are in the conference room upstairs. Thanks, Rita. As they climbed the stairs leading to the nicest conference room in the building, Liam asked, Are you expecting someone? She announced confidently. There are some people here I want you to meet. At the top of the stairs, Liam could see a man and a woman in business suits looking out on the San Francisco Bay. Thanks for coming up on such short notice, you guys. She announced as though he were talking to, the, to close friends. They turned, and Shay introduced everyone. This is Liam, the CEO of Del Mar Alarm. The man spoke first. We've heard really good things about you, Liam. As he and the woman shook Liam's hand, Shay introduced them. Liam, this is Joe Warblin. Joe Warblin and Carrie Ryder. You can call me Joey. Liam was thoroughly confused about why they were there and what do you guys do he asked joy looked at shay oh you guys haven't talked about this yet shay shook his head no i thought it would be good to wait until now that carrie seemed a little hesitant but finally jumped in well we're from bayside partners we're shay's private equity firm liam was puzzled and looked at shay not able to delay the announcement any longer, Shay looked down at his feet and then back up at Liam. I want to buy your company, my friend. He waited to see how the British CEO would react, but Liam only frowned as though he couldn't process what he was hearing. Shay continued, we're going to make you a very rich man, Liam. Shay and his investors.
Masters moved to the conference table to sit down, and Lian followed them in. Something of a catatonic state. Lian followed them in. Followed them in some. In something of a catatonic state. When they were seated, Joey went first. I know this is sudden. Shay just called us this morning. But the way he described your company... And the idea that he could put together a sizable regional rival to All-American Alarm made us jump at the oppor opportunity. Liam began to emerge from his haze, and his face was growing red. What in the world makes you think this is doable? Well, Joey explained politely, Golden Gate Security is flush with cash. They have much more than you guys in San Diego. He paused and seemed a little less hesitant to go on. And, well, we called a few members of your board. What did they say? Liam asked desper desperately. I can't imagine that they carry interrupted, ac interrupted. Actually, I spoke to Tom and Catherine, and they said there was no way they would approve of anything like this. Liam was visibly relieved. Right, I didn't think this time Joey interrupted until we told them how much we were prepared to pay. That seemed to change their attitude. And what about your board? Liam pressed Shay. Do they think this is a good idea? Shay nodded. When I shared your numbers with them, they told me to move fast, which is why we're here, Carrie explained. We think there's a window of opportunity that may close sooner than we'd like. And then we're going to approach two of the larger security companies in Los Angeles and Phoenix to see if we can't create a real West Coast threat to all American alarm. Liam barely nodded his head, but only to indicate that he was hearing what Carrie had said. His shock was giving way to resignation. You don't expect me to commit to anything right now, do you? Joey laughed. No, no, of course not. We came here to show you how serious we are. Shay thought it would be better than a call or a Skype meeting, but we would like to accelerate this and try to close by the end of Golden Gate's fiscal year. That gives us two and a half months, Shay explained. Liam nodded dispassionately, right? So is there anything specific that you want from me today? Joey and Carrie looked at one another and then turned back to Liam, shaking their heads. No, Carrie explained. At this point, we have to do some due diligence and paperwork before we can present you with anything concrete. We'll let you know when we're ready to talk again, and if all goes well. We'd like to get go down there for a site visit sometime soon. Liam nodded his head again, trying to force a smile. Okay, then it was nice meeting you. He didn't mean it. Clearly getting the message that Liam had nothing else to say. The well-dressed investors stood, exchanged handshakes with Shay, and left the room. Shay returned to the table, a little nervous. Okay, I know this is a bit of a shock, Liam. Liam was stunned. You think so? He responded with a mix of anger and sarcasm. Shea went on. But I think it's the right thing to do at the right time. Silence. Finally, Liam spoke, barely containing his emotions. Shea, it would be very easy for me to be furious with you right now. He paused. In fact, if I still had the boxing gloves that my parents kept in our garage, for me and my brother... I'd be tempted to lace them up right now in this conference room and beat the bloody crap out of you. He paused again, but that's not my thing. Shea smiled sheepish, sheepishly and uncomfortable, uncomfortably. Well, I'm certainly glad for that. Liam didn't respond to the poor, to the poor attempt at humor. And you should be really glad that I didn't say in front of your partners what I'm about to say to you right now. I appreciate that, Shea offered, though he didn't seem to know exactly what Liam was getting at. Good, because we need to continue the talk we were having at lunch, and if you thought I was direct there, you, there you're going to be in for a surprise. The smile on Shea's face faded. Do you really think our conversation is still relevant? Shea asked Liam. I mean, given what's going on. Liam took a deep breath. You really don't get it, do you? I guess not, 
she responded unconvincingly. Do you think you are going to be able to take what we've done at Del Mar and keep it going? He didn't wait for a response. Do you think that our numbers are unreal, unrelated to the things I've been telling you about? She didn't respond, but his demeanor seemed to indicate that he disagreed with what Liam was saying. Your numbers are up here are worse than ours because you aren't doing your job. He stood up from his chair. You don't even like your job. Wait a second, she interrupted, slightly agitated now. Liam didn't stop. You run terrible meetings and you don't care. You don't manage your people or your team and you don't care. You don't have uncomfortable conversations with your people. You spend most of your time doing the things you feel like doing. Shay offered no rebuttal. Liam went on, don't you realize that your job is to do things that no one else in the company can do? Shay didn't seem to have an answer. Finally, he offered a pathetic response. Maybe I prefer to delegate. Come on, man. Liam raised his voice. You're not delegating. You're abdicating. In a matter of minutes, Shay's disposition had shifted from confident to apologetic to defensive. Is that all you've got? I don't like meetings and I don't like to, holy sh to babysit people. No, it's not all I've got, but it's not about meetings and babysitting. It's about keeping your people engaged in the most important conversations. And it's about holding them to higher standards. He paused, but I guess it makes sense when your standards for yourself are so low. Now Shay was angry. That's bullshit. I work my ass off for this company, and just because I'm outmaneuvering you doesn't give you the right to. He paused, searching for the right words. Be an asshole. <laughs> Liam didn't respond. Silence. When he was convinced that Shay was done speaking for the moment, he finally spoke. You're right. He paused, and you're wrong. Shay seemed neither pleased nor angry, so Liam went on, I have no right to be an asshole, and my last comment was harsh. Shay was still angry, but shrugged, as if to say, it's not that big of a deal, so what am I wrong about? You're not going to want to hear this, but I have to tell you anyway. He paused before finishing. You might be working hard, but you're not doing it for the company. What the hell does that mean? Shay wanted to know. Knowing that his adversary might now punch him for what he was about to say, Liam responded, You're doing it for yourself. To Liam's great surprise and relief, Shay didn't seem as angry as he did sad. In fact, all he said was, Tell me more about that. And that was when Liam decided there was still hope for a breakthrough. Liam returned to the table and sat down next to Shay. Okay, you need to pay attention here. I'm not going to pay. I'm not going to pull any punches. Have you been pulling punches? Because if that's what you call pulling, Liam interrupted. No, I haven't. But I could have been bloody, man. I could have been bloody mean. Okay, Shay responded with a strange mixture of mixture of confusion and trust. Here it is in a nutshell. You are doing the things you like to do. You aren't doing the things your company needs you to do. And that is why your company's performance is so far behind ours. He paused. You need to believe me here. I'm telling you the truth. Shay took it in. And in a few minutes, I'm going to ask you one question. I need you to answer it honestly. You will have to think about it. It's extremely important. Why don't you just look? Why don't you just ask me now? Liam shook his head. I think you'll be able to answer it better a little later. Shay smiled. You're a strange guy, Liam. I mean, one minute you want to punch me in the face, the next you're trying to help me. Oh, I'd still like to punch you, Liam explained, but I think we can still figure this out and prevent a tragedy. Shay stopped smiling. Or maybe I can convince you that it wouldn't be a tragedy. That would make me very happy, Liam said. Then he went to the whiteboard and wrote the following. Things, things I avoided when I was a bad CEO. 
Number one, running great meetings. Number two, managing my executive team. Number three, managing my executives as individuals. Number four, having difficult conversations with people. Number five, constantly communicating and repeating key messages to employees. <laughs> Shay shook 
I said, I am not a technology guy, thank God. I have Ben and Margaret handle ops, and the HR stuff is usually so touchy-filly. Again, you just deal with the stuff you know about. Shay shrugged and nodded the stuff you enjoy. He nodded again, but a little less enthusiastically, and then he thought of something. Hey, I thought you were telling me earlier that you don't have time to get involved in your executive's departments and that all your time is taken up being the CEO. Now you're telling me I need to micromanage people. Liam shook his head. First, I didn't say I'm doing my people's job. I'm coaching them, making sure they have a good plan and that I know about any big issues before it's too late to do something about it. That's not micromanagement. Potato, potato. Liam shook his head. No, it's management. The only people who call it micromanagement are employees who don't want to be held accountable. She actually seemed to accept that logic. Liam finished his thought. And CEOs who don't want to have to manage at all. Ouch. Shea teased sarcastically. Hear me out. Just because someone is in his 40s or 50s or 60s and has lots of experience doesn't mean he doesn't need to be managed. It's not a form of punishment or the sign of a lack of trust. It's the benefit of direction and guidance. I mean, the best football player in the world still needs coaching. Are you talking about football or soccer? Shea asked, teasing again. Liam wasn't in the mood to indulge. Shea's poor attempt at humor. You know what I'm saying. The best golfers and tennis players and other athletes pay people lots of money to coach them. Why in the world would you think of a head of marketing or sales or finance doesn't need it? And that's to say nothing of managing them as a team. Shea shrugged. Liam protested. Liam persisted. More intense now. I'm serious, Shay. It's a sign of neglect for a CEO to stop managing people just because he can't get away with it. Just because he can get away with it. I'm sorry if I still seem skeptical. I guess I really thought about your management consultant. Gave you something a little more. He paused, searching for the right words. Concrete. This is all petty. This is all pretty soft. Liam took a deep breath. Can we take a ten minute break? I need to make a call of my own. Shay looked at his watch. Sure. We still have plenty of time before the end of the day, and I did need to have a quick call with my board. Let's meet back here in two. As Shay left, Liam said a quick prayer that Amy would be available. <laughs> when Shay returned, he saw Liam. Can you hear Pearl? When Shay returned, he saw Liam doing a video call on his laptop with a woman. Catching Liam's eye, he, men he motioned for permission to enter the room. Liam waved him in. Here he is now, Amy, Liam said to a woman on the computer screen. Then turning to Shay, he introduced them. Shay, this is Amy Sterling, who you spoke with briefly last week. She is one of the principals over at Lighthouse and the head consultant who worked with us over the past three years. Shay sat down in front of the computer and greeted the consultant confidently. Hi, Amy. It's nice to meet you. I certainly appreciate Liam sharing what you did for him. Do you? Amy asked without any sense of sarcasm or judgment. Well, yeah. I mean, I've always... It's always good to learn new things. She responded politely. I've only got about 10 minutes here before I have to get back in with my client, so I'll be direct. If that's okay, please. Well, Liam seems to think that you're not all that interested in learning new things. Perhaps he hasn't done a good job of portraying what we did with him at Del Mar. Does that sound right? She didn't answer the question directly. Amy, I'll be direct too. I just don't see how all this stuff about meetings and managing people and having uncomfortable conversations can possibly make the difference between success and failure. It's not that I don't see any value in it, but not every CEO goes about his or her job that way. Amy took it in. Okay, you're not the first CEO who said that. In fact, you sound a lot like Liam did a few years ago. Liam nodded at Shay as if to say, I told you so. She went on, let me make this 
this as clear as possible. If you're having bad meetings, you're making bad decisions, there's no getting around that. And you, and, and you're almost certainly not talking about all the right things. Shay seemed like he was about to respond, but Amy went on. And if you're if your meetings are bad, then there is a very, very good chance that your executives are having bad meetings with their teams. And if cascades, it cascades from there, and the person who is responsible for making your meetings effective is you, no one else, you can delegate that job. You can't delegate that job. It's yours and yours alone. I know, I know, Shay said defensively. That's what Liam's been telling me, and he said I'm not managing my people and not having difficult conversations. I get it. I just don't buy it. That's not who I am. It's not what I'm good at. Did Liam get to the last thing? You can't delegate. I don't know. Is there more? Yeah, you also have to be the primary communications tool. Well, I'm pretty involved in marketing and Even over Skype, Amy was able to interrupt Shay. No, I mean internal communication with employees. Yeah, I do that. We have a big kickoff with all the VPs at the beginning of the year, and I do a video thing we call the State of the Union right after that. And I try to visit the field offices once a quarter. I'm not bad at that. That's great, but I'm talking about being a constant, incessant reminder of the company's purpose, strategy, values, priorities. I like to say that you're not only the CEO, you're the CRO. Before she could ask, she explained the chief reminding officer, prospective employees, new employees, current employees, constant reminders and updates and stories. There is no such thing as communicating too much about the important stuff. Shay wasn't excited about what he was hearing, but he wanted to redeem himself in the eyes of the supposed expert. I sent out a quarterly business report with key customer updates and sales numbers. That's fine, Amy explained. But those are things your head of sales and CFO can do. I'm talking about the more fundamental stuff, keeping people focused and aligned and engaged around what you're doing, around, around what they're doing and why they're doing it. Shay took a deep, frustrated breath. Listen, Amy, I'm sure that you and your firm do wonderful work, and I'm sure that many companies out there are a good fit for your message. As much as he wanted to yell at Shay, Liam kept his cool and let him continue. But I just don't think my time is best spent doing all this stuff you're talking about. I'm a deal maker. maker. I'm good at putting together deals explaining why the Golden Gate solution is right for our customers and coming in when things get hairy and convincing them to go with us. This is a huge part of our success. Silence. Liam would later learn that even Amy was fighting off the urge to get angry at Shay. Finally, Amy pulled her last and most dangerous arrow from her quiver. I have a question for you, Shay, and it's the most important one of all. I don't want you to answer right away, but to really give it a thought, and please be completely honest. Shay looked at Liam, suddenly suddenly a little excited. Is this the big question you were going to ask me earlier? But that's not why... screen. Okay. Amy continued. Shay, why did you want to become a CEO? She's dreaming. That's, I think that's actually Vivian dreaming. <laughs> yeah, I know that's not like calm. God, I thought I wasn't going to have to get up. Mark 
dressed up in one of his recent uh, videos. I forget what he was. Uh, he was talking about Welsh. Some, some. He, he's from Wales, and he was talking about some Welsh stuff. Anyway, where were we? Amy continued. Shay, why did you want to become a CEO? She paused. Or perhaps a better way to ask this: Why do you still want to be the CEO of Golden Gate Alarm, Golden Gate Security? He corrected her. Sorry. Anyway, take a minute to think about that. I'm really, really curious about your answer. He started to speak and she cut him off. Please take a full minute to think about it before answering. Shay looked out the window and stretched the same way his dog did every morning. <laughs> no one spoke. Shay seemed to be concentrating on the answer. After about 45 se seconds, Shay broke the silence. I have an answer. Okay, go ahead, Amy said. I don't know, Shay said matter-of-factly. You don't know, Liam asked incredul incredulously. Amy was smiling on the screen. Shay shook his head at Liam. No, I really don't know. Shay paused, frowning, as though he were s simultaneously puzzled and confident. Then turning back toward Amy, he explained, I mean... How do you answer that question? I'm driven. I want to succeed. I like to compete. I want to improve. I guess ever since I started working, I knew that I would one day be the CEO of something. It's the prize that keeps you going. Neither Amy nor Liam responded right away. Shay turned back to Liam. What did you want? Why did you want to be the CEO for the same reason you did? Shay seemed confused, so Liam explained. That's not why I want to be the CEO of Del Mar Alarm now. What do you mean now? Amy jumped in. Listen, guys, I'm so sorry, but I have to get back into my off-site with a client. I think you can handle it from here. Though Liam wasn't sure she was right, he agreed with Amy and thanked her for her time, and she was gone. Liam gathered himself and tried to be as strong and confident as possible. Shay, I want to be the CEO of Del Mar because I see my job as a responsibility and a sacrifice. You're the CEO of Golden Gate because you see your job as a reward. Like you, I used to think that way, that being a CEO was a reward for a lifetime of hard work, which meant it was about getting to do what I wanted because I had earned the right to do so. That's why I failed so miserably in England, and I was about to do the same thing in San Diego. And that's what you're doing here. He paused before finishing. And the thing is, it might work for you, but it never works for the people or the organizations you're supposed to be heading. She was neither agreeing with nor dismissing Liam, who went on. All those responsibilities and activities we've been talking about today are just a function of our motives for being a leader. We could talk all day about what we're supposed to do, but if we don't understand why we're leading in the first place, none of it will make sense. Liam saw the look on Shay's face change just slightly as though a light bulb, albeit a dim one, went off in his head, so he continued. Shay, when I have to dive into the middle of a petty political issue between the sales and engineering teams, or when I have to give someone their final warning about having no change to their having to change their behavior, or when I have to call a meeting after hours or deal with an emergency issue, or when I have to give the same bloody orientation speech to another group of new employees, or when I have to go out to the installers and remind them that they are front line of the company and everyone is relying on them. Or when I have to, he paused, do everything that no one else can do because they're not the CEO. I smile and I thank God that I am making a difference. I have the worst and best, loneliest and most social, most appreciated and most thankless job in the company. And I do that job with pride and without complaint. Because that was what I signed up for, even if I didn't realize it until Amy told me. Shay sat there silently. Liam couldn't read him at all. Finally, 
Finally, Shay nodded his head and spoke. You're a good guy, Liam. Liam was confused. Your running up here was as generous as it was bizarre, and I mean that in the best way. Shay seemed sincere. Liam acknowledged the unique compliment. Shay took a deep breath. Let's do this on Monday morning. Why don't we talk? Liam interrupted. I have my leadership team meetings from 10 to noon. Okay, then let's talk right after lunch on Monday, if that works. I won't say anything to my employees here, and I'd appreciate if you didn't with yours. Let's take the weekend to let all this settle and see where we are, okay? Liam nodded. Yeah, I guess so. Okay. The two very different CEOs shook hands and called it an early day. Shane had no idea that his next session would come before the weekend began. And let's go ahead and stop there. Let's see where we are. We are beyond, well beyond halfway. I don't know that I can finish it next time when we get to see where, okay, yeah, there's a few, like, we don't have to read the acknowledgements. Okay, there we go. So, uh, I think we, we might need two more sessions. One of them would be short. Yeah, we're going to need, maybe not. How about this? I'm going to read one more chapter. <laughs> Got to keep going. By the time Shay made it back to his office, his cell phone was ringing. It was Danny calling about dinner. Hey, the boys are sleeping over at friends' houses tonight. All of them. Yeah, let's go on a date. Okay. You say where and when and I'll be there. I want Maria's, Danny declared. I haven't been there in months. Oh, I went there for lunch. Danny begged. Okay, you go again. You can get something different, please. Okay, but you're buying. Deal, see you at 5.30. Then she caught herself. Oh, how was your day with Liam Alcott? She exaggerated his name and added a slight English accent to it. I'll tell you at dinner, 5.30. Danny was already seated at the restaurant when Shay arrived. She was at the table next to the one where Shay and Liam had been five hours earlier. As soon as Shay sat down, she began, so tell me about your day. Shay was surprised by her enthusiasm. You're awfully excited. Well, Rita told me that things got really heated. She didn't know why, but she thought it might be big. Well, let's say it didn't go the way Liam probably thought it would. Was he an ass? Danny caught herself. I'm sorry, I should be nicer. Was he pom Was he as pompous as you thought he would be? Shay paused and winced. Oh, I hate to admit it, but no, I honestly can't say he was a pompous ass at all. In fact, he was a pretty decent guy. Danny was pleased. Okay, that's good, right? Shay shrugged. Yeah, I guess so. You guess so. What do you mean? It's complicated. Okay, Buster. Danny scolded her husband. You're going to start from the beginning and tell me exactly what happened and slow down for the heated part. For the next half hour, Shay recounted the, the day in as much detail as he could. Everything from the financial comparison to the initial call to his investors to launch to Maria's and the fact that they sat at the at adjacent table in the big meeting back in the conference room. Danny listened attentively, but when Shay was finished, she seemed to have lost her sense of excitement. What's wrong? Her husband asked. Nothing. I don't know. You seem a little confused or disappointed. Danny glanced over at the empty table next to theirs. I don't know. Come on. Shay encouraged her. You usually know. Okay, she said, frowning. Don't take this the wrong way because I might be seeing this all wrong. Shay nodded. There is one thing that isn't making sense to me, and it's weird. She was clearly hesitant to say what she was thinking. Come on, ladies, spill it. She smiled. Okay, I'm just wondering if this acquisition is such a good idea. Shay responded quickly. Listen, if we can pull in three or four good regional security companies together, we will make it much, much harder for all American to. Danny interrupted her husband. I know it makes strategic sense. I get that. 
She paused yet again. So what's the problem, he asked. Well, how is Liam feeling about all this? I mean, he didn't come up here to sell his company, to sell you his company. She shrugged. I mean, he's not thrilled. But this is how business works some, sometimes. Especially in an evolving market, and Liam's either going to become very rich and leave, or become very rich and stick around to help out. Trust me, he's going to be fine. Danny didn't seem completely satisfied. Okay, but, honey, do you really want to run a bigger company? Shay shrugged. Why not? It's just a different size. But do you want to run a bigger company? I mean, are you really enjoying what you're doing now? He frowned, a little confused. She went on, since you've become CEO, I think you've complained more about work than you did in the last ten years. Are you having fun? Sure, he responded much too quickly. I mean, it's hard being the CEO. It's a lonely job, I know. But tonight you seem so excited because you're doing this big deal. And what's the problem with that? Are you going to be excited doing all the stuff that it requires? Or are you just going to keep looking for another acquisition? What are you really looking forward to here? She looked over at the table next to him and stared, sagged in his chair. That is so weird what Danny was concerned. You, you sound like the woman from Liam's consulting firm. What do you mean? Well, she asked me why I wanted to be a CEO, and I thought it was a stupid question. Danny tried to reassure her husband. Well, I can see why you thought that. I mean, you've worked hard all these years, and well, it seems logical. She paused, right? She nodded, but didn't seem to mean it. Yeah, but if you're asking me the same question, and he didn't finish the sentence, okay, let's answer the, this question together. Why do you want to be a CEO? Then she corrected herself, or maybe the better question should be, why do you want to do what a CEO does? She looked at her like she had just told him there was no Santa Claus. What did you just say? I said you should ask yourself why you like doing what a CEO does, the day-to-day -day stuff. Why did you ask it that way? Well, remember when I was teaching fourth grade at St. Mary's before we joined the parish? Remember when the principal's job opened up and someone asked me to consider applying? She nodded though he was somewhat ashamed that he hadn't been an attentive as he should have back then, <laughs> as attentive. Danny continued, well, at first I thought, heck, yeah, I should apply. I'm one of the best teachers at the school. You were the best teacher at that school. You're biased. Anyway, when I thought about what principals do all day and what I loved about being a teacher, I realized that it wasn't right for me. Up until that point, I always assumed that I'd be a principal, but I realized it was an ego thing. I really just wanted to be in a classroom teaching, not mar not managing teachers and going to meetings. Shea was suddenly intense. One of Out of nowhere, he asked, hey, a principal is a verb, right? Danny was confused. What? Oh, a participle. Hey, a participle is a verb, right? Danny was confused. What? You know, a, a, a participle is. She interrupted him. Yes, I know what a participle is. Why are you asking me that in the middle of this conversation? So he had explained the difference between a chief executive officer and a chief executing officer. Danny was nodding her head. Oh, that's good. Yes, it really should be the chief executing officer. It's about doing the job, not just having the job. At that point, they dropped his margarita. At that point, Shay dropped his margarita and spilled it directly into the, his basket of tortilla, chip, tortilla chips. As they cleaned up the mess, which was largely contained within the basket of soggy chips, Danny could see Shay was upset about more than the spill. What's going on, Shay? I think I have a problem. And now, I believe we can finish it in one more video. Thank you so much for joining me while we 
watch while we read this book together. I'm excited to find out what happens at the end. More life lessons kind of make sense. Some of this stuff is uh, a little bit woo-woo, but I don't want to sound like Shay. Keep an open 